All right. Welcome back, guys. Matt Mitchell from Mission Life Motion back with another live stream this week. We've got a special guest on today, Ryan Fellman from Path to Manliness uh, is here and he's going to be, we're going to talk to him about the current state of masculinity and um, it's going to be an interesting show. I've got some, uh, some, some notes I've made here. If you guys caught my last video, I, uh, talked about the two months of coaching I got from Ryan regarding uh, largely Twitter, but also, you know, brand coaching as well. So if you guys missed that, be sure to check that out. It's one video back on the channel, but how are you doing, Ryan? Hey, I'm good, Matt. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, so I guess how I want to start this is just to, uh, for those viewers of my channel that maybe are unfamiliar with you or didn't catch the last video, if you could just kind of give a brief intro of who you are and what Path to Manliness is all about. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Ryan Fellman and uh, I also go by Path to Manliness. Um, and I run a website called Path to Manliness. I've got a few social media accounts, um, most prominent on Twitter. Uh, I haven't really spent as much time on YouTube, although I am starting to shift into that a little bit. Uh, but basically what I do is I, you know, comment on the state of masculinity in the world. And, you know, my whole point is to try to, to help men become better versions of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in that, in that sense, that last part you mentioned, we're, we're kind of similar as far as, as that part goes. Uh, I know a lot of you and I kind of see eye to eye on a lot of stuff and yeah. it's kind of interesting because we haven't really talked like, like this, this isn't been how we've usually communicated. It's been more of a coaching conversation, but um, thankfully, you know, we get the opportunity to do that today. So you have a really interesting story um, as far as, you know, I, I, I caught that hype theory podcast you were on, um, recently, and I, I haven't listened to the Life Math Money one, but I've, I've got that on my list next. But um, you, right before you started Path to Manliness, you kind of went through um, a tough time, um, yeah. and you kind of you have a really, you know, at least in my opinion, inspiring story that I think a lot of guys could be motivated be motivated by and do you want to kind of talk about what happened there or yeah sure how that um thanks man i'm glad you think it's inspiring because you know sometimes I, <laughs> I i don't know it's it's not exactly my finest moment but um yeah so about three years ago or four years ago or so um i went through a divorce and uh you know it, it was kind of a unique situation that i wasn't exactly completely innocent like I definitely did some things wrong, but it was a situation where, um, more or less I was living my life by the book. You know, I had a good job. I was working the nine to five, uh, you know, I spent my weekends watching football, hanging out with my kid, uh, you know, pretty conventional stuff, nothing too crazy. Yeah. Um, but at the same time I was drinking too much beer, not in the sense that I was like an alcoholic and it was just that I had you know, the extra weight, like I was definitely going towards that dad bod build and like, yeah. you know, I was probably 30, 40 pounds overweight, nothing drastic, but you know, I think like a lot of guys, I was just living this kind of average, but okay life. And, uh, you know, I was just sleeping through life and I didn't realize it. Uh, my ex on the other hand, she had a lot of more serious issues. She had some, some, um, addiction issues with hardcore drugs and, uh, Ooh. Shockingly, when you go through the court system, um, it's not as big of a deal to them as you would think it would be. You know, like you raise all your life thinking that if you get caught in a legal situation with, you know, hardcore drugs, you figure that at the very least, it's some kind of a, you know, black eye on you. But they right. kind of looked at her as if she was like a victim of her own circumstances, even though it's something that she put herself in. Um, so it, it, <laughs> It was weird in that while going through the divorce, you know, they didn't exactly look at me as favorably as I expected. So um, 
long story short, I suffered through this divorce. It damn near bankrupted me. Um, I ended up getting out of this marriage and being significantly in debt. I had like $30,000 worth of credit card debt. I was overweight. My life was just like falling apart. And I remember just thinking, you know, I, I just, I couldn't figure out how to process all the emotions and the anger I was going through. And my outlet had always been the gym, but when you're going through something as intense as a divorce where there's like your, you know, your kid's life is on the line. Yeah. Like you get angry more often than you can afford to go to the gym. Like I, I just couldn't be going to the gym two or three times a day. So I had to find another outlet and it was something that I never even considered. And, uh, my, uh, lawyer's assistant kind of mentioned to me, like, you know, you may scoff at this idea, but you should try writing in a journal. And I did. I was like, my first thought was writing in a journal. Like, what am I? Like a little teenage girl. Like, I'm going to write about my feelings. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I don't know why, like, I was so offended by the notion of it, but I, I didn't know what else to do. So I started writing and um, it wasn't particularly good. It was a lot of angry stuff, really. But it helped. So, like, I had these feelings of frustration and anger. And instead of, you know, writing some angry Facebook post or whining to my uh, girlfriend about it or whatever, I, I just wrote them down in a journal. And the weird thing is that, you know, even though nothing really changes, just getting it down on paper, like, kind of let me let go of those feelings. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I wrote, I filled up a whole moleskin notebook and then it kind of just became a habit. And after a while there, it stopped being so much. I was writing about angry stuff and it was more, I was just writing because I was so used to writing and it started turning into this where I was writing things that are helping me be more constructive. I was keeping really good notes about what was working, what wasn't. And like over that course of that year, you know, I knocked off, just about all the credit card debt. I lost, I think, 25 pounds. Yeah. And I started, uh, I started working out a lot. I started running. <laughs> I started doing like obstacle course races and stuff. Like I just, yeah. I went from living this really boring life to, you know, finally having like meaning in it. And it completely changed my entire trajectory, my entire path. Yeah. And that, and I mean, that all happened from what it sounds like in a very short time span, right? I yeah. Mean, I mean, less than a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it wasn't like I was, I didn't have my life perfect, but like I could just tell it was getting better. And every month things just seemed like a little bit better and better. And, you know, it's, if you haven't been through a divorce, it's kind of a strange thing to explain to people because it's like slavery in a sense where you're stuck doing certain things. A lot of times it won't let you leave the County with your kid. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're locked in. It's such a crazy deal. Uh, the judge had us exchanging my son with my ex like every day for, um, I don't remember how long this lasted a few months, I guess, but I, I had to exchange him with her every single day. So I had him for a day and then she yeah. had him for a day and they arbitrarily picked like noon, 12 o'clock in the day. She's like, you can use your lunch break. And, I learned not to speak up in the court system because it just, there's nothing good comes of it. But, you know, I don't have yeah. a lunch break or I didn't have a lunch break, but yeah, they don't, they don't think about that stuff, man. There's, there's so many ways where guys just get raked over the coals and, you know, but I'm, I actually have moved past it. Like I know it's frustrating. And I speak about it for other men. I'm not angry at what happened to me because it really did set me on a better path. Yeah. There's a lot of guys on this corner of the internet that just, never get out of that, uh, you know, hatred that or anger frustration. Face. They just get stuck there and they usually end up becoming, you know, black pill or MGTOW yeah. or whatever. So I think you were able to channel that energy into something productive and creative. So that's yeah. a something guys can look up to you for, in my opinion. I mean, I think that's, that's what you should do. You know, you shouldn't like let life, you know, keep you down. So, yeah, well, and it's almost become like a joke in, uh, on Twitter and certain social media <laughs> sites. But, uh, one of the things that kind of helped me at the time was stoicism and, uh, yeah. I kind of stumbled onto it by accident. Um, I don't know where I found out about it, but I, I started, I started reading Ryan holiday Yeah, and, I read his story, I think it's called Conspiracy, the 
the Gawker story with Hulk Hogan, where um, Peter Thiel kind of leveraged Hulk Hogan to take down the Gawker media site. And uh, it was such a fascinating book. I think I read it in like two sittings, which for me is really fast. Um, wow, I gotta, I gotta read that one. I haven't. It's it's a crazy story. It's it's hard to put down. It's such a bizarre thing. And I'm not normally the guy that cares about a sex story, uh, yeah. but there's a lot more going on. That was just kind of the the leverage that he used to to take down this. I mean, media giant. Wow. Yeah. But one from... second. Oh, okay. Hey, well, let's see. Let me see if I can get that thing off my face. One second. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it's a little bit blurry now, but but the Peter T or the Ryan Holiday, he also wrote a book called The Daily Stoic. So okay. I liked that book, and I decided I want to pick out another book. So I grabbed that one, and, and uh, it was kind of my intro to Stoicism. I'd heard about it, but I didn't know a lot about it. And The Daily Stoics, like this book, where you just read a quote from Marcus Aurelius Seneca, some ancient Stoic guy. And then he has yeah. like a little blurb about it. Super easy to read. It's only a page a day. It's like uh, it's like those calendar books or whatever. And uh, the whole idea of Stoicism really helped because a lot of what I was dealing with, there were things I couldn't change. And I could get angry at it. And that's what a lot of these guys are doing. These guys that give into MGTOW and Black, Black Pill. You know, I see guys talk all the time about like how you know, these girls are such sluts at college and there's all these girls get on OnlyFans and I yeah. think they're getting kind of trapped in this weird echo chamber where they're focusing in on that stuff so much that they, they're not realizing that if you go out to a coffee shop and you go talk to a pretty girl, I can almost guarantee you that not only is she probably not that much of a slut, I can damn well guarantee she doesn't have OnlyFans. <laughs> you know, like it's not as common as they want you to think it is, but what the OnlyFans is it? I don't think it is in the real world. I think if you go on, oh, yeah. on social media and you look at Twitter girls, yeah, you're going to see a lot of that. But if you go out into your local coffee shop and start talking to some girl, like there's plenty of normal girls out there. And some of these guys are so caught hating the bad ones that they're missing all the good ones. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're, it depends on where you're going a lot too. I mean, I think if you're going to, right. you know, bars and clubs, you're going to, you're going to run into that a lot more, but if you're going to coffee shops, you know, um, you won't see it as much as the internet would, would lead you to believe. Right. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was going to ask you about stoicism. Actually, I know you're into, uh, Marcus Aurelius and, um, some other stuff, you know, stoicism type, uh, content. And, uh, so that, that that's had an, an, an influence on you. It sounds like as far as helping you turn your life around, you know, the principles. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just the whole core concept of, you know, letting go of what you can't control and focusing in on what you can. You, know, you hear people all the time say, I don't have time. Uh, I don't have enough energy to do this, do that. And it's like, well, stop wasting your time and stop wasting your energy and all the stuff you can't, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's real easy to start getting angry and, and, you know, complaining about stuff and getting into these like petty internet fights. Like, I, I can't tell you how many people lately will tell me they're like, um, how much they hate politics. But then you start looking at what they're doing and they're on Facebook and they're arguing with some like friend or acquaintance or whatever. Like, I yeah. have to tell this person because they're wrong. It's like, dude, who cares? Like, that's not really an audience. And if you really cared and you want to actually like convince people, don't convince one person on Facebook. Go right online. Right. And if you can convince 10 people, that's a way better use of your time. Yeah. I I mean, I can relate to you with the, to some degree, with the writing. Um, I actually started writing several years ago, probably, uh, how old was I? Around 2014, I started writing pretty consistently. Um and it's something you get better at as you go on. And um, I think it helps you process things that are happening in your life that obviously yeah. there's been things that have happened to me since then that have been uh, very tough. And being able to write was an outlet and it makes you more self-aware, you know, it makes you understand yourself so much better. Um, and you, it, it starts to give you a creator mindset instead of a consumer mindset. 
You know, yeah. that that's the very first thing that flipped that switch for me was writing. Um, it, I started to look at the world differently. I started to look at the world as more of a creator instead of a consumer. And I think a, one of the reasons guys are so unhappy, I think I sent a tweet out about this a few days ago is, um, that's all they're doing is consuming. They get on Facebook, Instagram, and they're just stuck in the scroll and they're not, they have no purpose. They have no mission. You know, you and I talk about a mission a lot, uh, how important that is for a man. And when a man doesn't have a mission or a sense of purpose, he gets angry. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have a mission or a purpose. Um, and, and a lot of people that do have some kind of a purpose, like it's not a fulfilling one. You know, how many people are working some dead end job that they hate and they're just lost? They don't know how to find the next step up, the better job or a different opportunity. And I think that's where some people get kind of stuck is that I was in that mindset for a long time where it was always I was always focusing on my nine to five and I wasn't focused on the five to nine. Yeah. And I thought that if I just busted my my butt if i busted my butt through work i could you know eventually climb the corporate ladder and i would find a more fulfilling purpose but it wasn't that that was making me happy it was when i started writing online and i started doing this and like i remember the first time i wrote something this was even before path to mailing this i ran another site for a year just kind of to try it out and yeah. i remember being shocked that three people read it the first day i was like well that's kind of cool and then, I don't know, I think I had like almost a thousand on day three and it, it blew my mind. I was like, I can't believe a thousand people actually want to read this stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. I can relate to that because I had an old website too. I, I actually, I even wrote a whole ebook that I put up on my old blog and I had like six or seven people buy it. And yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even end up pursuing that, but that kind of <laughs> changed my perspective. I was like, people that don't, have you know a website or a brand they, they think you know i tell i don't even like to tell people like i know that i do this because like i, I already I know they're that. not going to get it yep yeah most people have no interest in like self-improvement they just want yeah. the bread and circuses they want to talk about football and stuff you know they just they don't they're not in this world and that's okay um you know and, I, and i'm focusing in on my brand and on path to maleness and the whole idea of writing online, but that doesn't have to be your purpose. You know, there's other things guys can do that can be yeah. more fulfilling. Um, you know, I used to go kayaking every weekend, you know, and I was like way into that. And like, I know people that do like the kayaking tours, like that's like their job. Um, you know, volunteering's big. I don't know what the reason is exactly, but guys don't seem to do this very much. And like, there's a real problem with like a lack of, of male energy in the world right now because you got all these kids growing up a lot of them are growing up now without fathers and that's across all races now which is kind of crazy yeah. how it's like instantly become much more normal um the teachers are almost entirely female the only thing they really got is like sports and stuff so you know maybe you're into baseball if you can help coach like little league and stuff you have no idea how much of an impact you can make on some of these kids yeah, and that's another thing I have on my uh, in my notes here. There's there seems to be an enormous uh, void now, um, a lack of male role models. Yeah, and this kind of leads us into the next point I wanted to talk about, which is the current state of masculinity. Um, there's a lot of men, particularly a lot of young men, that are just they have no sense of direction. Um, which we just talked about, but the re there's a reason for that. And because there's not enough male role models. I mean, that's right. why, I mean, I know I didn't have any, my, my dad um, wasn't really, he wasn't the masculine father that, um, that I, that I needed, you know, he, he, he did really well in some areas. Like he taught me how to work hard and, you know, how to sell and how to have a work ethic type A personality. But there's a lot of stuff he didn't teach me and didn't show me that I had to learn on my own. Yeah. That, Which, you know, guys from that generation didn't really have that problem as much. Yeah. Yeah. I think 
I think a lot of guys, even guys that had a good father figure, like there was always something that was missing, you know, and, and my dad was kind of similar to yours in that he taught me uh, work ethic and sales. He got me into sports and all this stuff. But then I was like clueless with girls for a long time. Like, yeah, and, not, and I didn't know it either. That's the worst part because I was I was always pretty good at talking to girls and I was good yeah. at getting in relationships. But then like something would happen and I would get upset with her and I wouldn't realize like the way she was manipulating me or the way she was like just kind of, you know, stringing me along on something. I, I wouldn't see that kind of stuff. I didn't get it. I still had that. And I'm talking when I was young, you know, like teens, or early 20s. Um, but like, I, I didn't understand a lot of like the shady stuff some girls do, but, um, yeah, there's, there's a real, real lack of male role models. Um, the, the other thing that gets me on the role model thing is that over the last 10 years or so, even longer, if you want to go back, cause it's kind of been a, a frog in a boiling pot of water kind of thing where the media, whether it's music movies tv commercials even video games like you used to have these um either strong male figures or at least like normal male figures and now it's become this weird diversity olympics thing where they're just trying to find the you know how do we put in more characters that fit this you know group that doesn't feel like they belong and you you see a lot of like emasculation of men now in these movies and shows like how many times do you watch some tv show or even in a commercial where the guy is just this bumbling doofus and yeah. then the woman's just like making jokes at his expense but then if you switch the roles around like people will get like visibly upset but whenever a man gets upset over these kind of things like they always quip with like man up or you know oh don't take this so seriously but you know, some kids are going to grow up and that might be their only role model. You know, like kids used to grow up with He-Man and now they're growing up with, I don't even know. I'm so out of touch oh. with TV and stuff, but I just know like everyone's so emasculated now. And there's this yeah. you go girl mindset where it's all about female empowerment. And like, I don't mind it. Like I thought Gina Carano in The Mandalorian was actually a pretty great example of like how you can make a girl the tough girl and like the guys don't get upset about it because she's an ex MMA fighter. Like I yeah. buy her beating up dudes. Like it makes sense to me and it looks right. But when it's like, you know, Gal Gadot, like uh, I, it's I everywhere. She, I mean, I mean, it's it's like they could they couldn't force feed it to us more. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I don't know. It's just I, I completely agree with what you're saying, too. And it really hit home for me. I've known about this for a few years. I mean, I've noticed this. Right. I've picked up on this. But if you even just Google, go to Google and type in masculinity and but go to the image part of it. And yeah, like every image you see is tied to an article talking about like toxic masculinity. Yeah. Like. Like if, if there's, if there's like 30 images on there, 24 of them will be linked to an article talking about toxic masculinity. If you just Google the word masculinity, it's insane. It is. Um, yeah. And I mean, I didn't even no notice that until a few days ago. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's a crazy time we're living in. So there's definitely, I just feel like there's a narrative they're trying to, they're trying to push. And well, it originated with Hollywood. <clears throat> it definitely did. They're trying to demonize men. And I wouldn't mind if it was something like, here's things that men are doing wrong. And here's how they can do better. But whenever they say that, when they say men need to do better, it's always done in this weird, like pedantic and condescending manner. It's not in an effort to help men like guys like you and I are doing, you know, because the state of masculinity isn't great. Like I do look around my average person you know, and I look and I'm like, dude, you got to lay off the cheeseburgers for a couple of weeks and get your health in order. Like you're, you're telling me that you look at yourself in the mirror and you're okay with this. Like, I'm not yeah. saying you got to have a six pack. You don't need to be able to bench like, you know, twice your body weight or whatever, but like, yeah. you should be able to pick your kid up 
and carry her like a quarter mile and run out of a burning building or something. But like how many guys would stumble just going up the stairs or be like gasping for breath by the time they hit the front door? Yeah. Can't look like, down and see their Johnson. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, I think to me, like being healthy is non-negotiable. I, I don't think there's any excuse unless you got like a serious medical condition where you cannot eat right and exercise, but like you should be able to be reasonably healthy. I mean, that's, uh, I, I mean, to me, I see that as like somebody that's been spiritually defeated, you know, yeah. that they just don't have a, a will to win, a will to succeed. I mean, I, I, I've been lifting weights since I was 14 years old, like before yeah. it, it was probably even unhealthy to be lifting as much as I was at that age. But, um, <laughs> and I've, I, you know, I haven't done it like super hardcore ever since, but um, and Valentine, I'll get to your question in a second. Um, but it's just, uh, it's having self-respect. I've got an article about this on, on my blog. Um, it's just, you got to have self-respect, you know, you got to respect yourself first, but it's hard for guys to do that nowadays because of this narrative that flies in at them and from flies in at them from every direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the other part of it is, uh, education. I think people think that they're eating okay and they don't realize like how much they're eating and how bad some of the things they are. Like it took me a long time to realize, uh, like not necessarily that how bad sugar was, but how much I was eating. Cause I, I yeah. didn't know all the foods that had sugar in it stuff like bread, like a hot dog bun has sugar in it. It's insane. Like I never would have thought to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially in the West, I mean, there's so much crap they right. put in the food, uh, genetically modified, um, you know, just, they do all sorts of crap to it, but, uh, yeah, you gotta be aware of stuff like high fructose corn syrup and, uh, yeah. you know, what happens yeah. to carbohydrates when you eat them? Like a lot of guys just don't understand how the human body processes food, you know? Right. And, and, well, and, and they'll yeah. eat those carbs and carbs and carbs because they're still hungry, but their body isn't saying, I want more carbs. It's saying, I want something of substance. It's looking for protein and it's signaling I need more food because it's not getting the protein. You know, so instead of trying to scarf down a bag of potato chips so you're done eating, like one little stick of beef jerky will get you there. Like it's, it's a lot of it's like what you're eating that's messing yeah. people up. We got a question here in the chat from Valentine. He says, do you have some advice for a young man in his early 20s trapped in a toxic relationship and failing university? I can relate to this. Um, I don't I don't share this very often, almost never with my like in real life friends. Um, my first semester in college, I was failing and uh, I went to the University of Illinois. It was a good school. And I bit off more than I could chew. And I was also in a toxic relationship. I didn't know that at the time. Uh, so you got two issues here and they might be related. Uh, odds are that college degree is going to be more important to you than the girl. So whatever you do, you got to get that down first. Um, yeah. So there's two things that are probably going on. One, like I don't know what year you are or whatever and with Zoom and all this stuff. I hate to say it, but going to class really does affect your grades. The worst grades I ever got were the classes that I didn't go to enough. I, I agree. And um, it sounds it sounds so basic to say, but like getting ahead of what you need to do is also big because most kids are like, oh, I got to do this tomorrow. It's like, yeah, but it was assigned three weeks ago. Like you probably should have started this a few days earlier and it can kind of help you maintain an even workload when you're starting to get things done ahead of time. Um, the other thing is, like, I don't know. You got to do some soul searching. Maybe you don't like what you're doing. And that's what that was what my problem was. I didn't like the major I picked. So I ended up switching into something else. Uh, so if that's the issue, look into your classes, see which ones you are doing good at and try to focus in on that kind of stuff. So either it's changing your major or maybe just changing the type of classes. Yeah. And then toxic relationship has got to be affecting you. That kind of stuff, that, that kind of drama. And it's got to be affecting the way you're studying. It's probably causing you undue stress so so either yeah. either have a sit down talk with her and, and explain to her 
certain boundaries that you need to have in the relationship or move past her. Like, and well, I know it might sound crazy, but like sometimes it's just not right. Well, okay. One thing I noticed about his question is he says he's trapped in a toxic relationship. So that's, an that's interesting. interesting. Word. Uh, okay. I mean, unless you have a kid with her, I don't see how you're trapped. You know, I don't know what that means either. Yeah. Um, if you do have a kid with her, you're not, you're not hundred percent trapped. You're trapped in that you guys are going to be co-parents forever, but you're not trapped in a yeah. relationship. Um, and I know that's tough, but <laughs> that might be the reality and it might be best for everybody involved, including the kid. I think um, that kind of, yeah, I think that kind of gets to the root of the problem too, is he thinks he's trapped, but, but he's not, you know, you can, I, I think guys have a hard time leaving relationships. Like you don't need a good reason to leave. Like, yeah, girls do this all the time to guys. Like they will dump a guy just because they found a better option or they weren't happy. You right. know, and just say that I don't want to waste your time anymore. Say that, you know, it's not clicking. I'm not happy, whatever. I think it'd be best if we went and found a better way. Yeah. Unless you got a kid, I don't, I don't understand the trap thing either, but I get the sense of feeling trapped. I can understand that. I mean, it comes down to being a man, honestly. I mean, you just have to grow a pair of balls and, you know, tell her you have to tell people that what you expect. And yeah. if you're unhappy about something, you have to have the balls to, to say it and mean it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I have a, I have an article about toxic relationships on mission life motion. So, you know, you can read that Valentine if you want, but really you just have to, you know, just quit overthinking it and just do what you need yeah. to do. There's, um, go ahead. There's a lot of relationships. I, I think it's really easy to pick out on the guys that are like toxic or whatever because it's it's more clear. But there's a lot of girls out there that do manipulate men, and they can be emotionally abusive. They can belittle their guy. You know, there's there's yeah. a lot of stuff like that that I think people dismiss and they don't see the effects of it. But you know, <laughs> I've heard plenty of girls say that they were emotionally abused. I've seen it happen to men too, and it's not weakness to say that that's happening to you it's weakness to let it keep happening yeah yeah exactly um it's easier to recognize it once you've gone through it i mean yes especially as you get older i, mean, I don't have time to deal with that shit anymore i mean i, yeah, I didn't know what's happening to me in multiple relationships and then i got into healthier ones and i realized how messed up those situations were yeah so plug this in okay um all right, let's see here. So we kind of talked about that. All right, what are some ways that you would, some advice that you would give to men on, um, you know, it, it, going back to what we were talking about, it almost kind of seems like there's a war against men in a way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's been, you know, Return of Kings, the old website Roosh used to run, talked about this kind of stuff quite a bit. I've actually been going back and reading a lot of those old articles. Um, but um, what advice would you give to guys to combat this? I mean, you know, as far as turning their life around and developing habits that will turn them into a winner. I mean, are there any that, that kind of come to the front of your mind that yeah um surrounding yourself with the right people is huge you know um there's a pretty i don't know if it's anecdotal but it's pretty consistent that you're the average income of like your five closest friends so the kind of people you hang out with have a profound impact on your life but it's not just that too like if you hang out with a bunch of people that are overweight alcoholics, like chances are you're going to end up being that same person too, because your group of friends are going to come up to you with opportunities. And on the days when you're bored and got nothing else to do, you're probably going to say yes. So if you got, you know, most of my early twenties, I would, I would move from city to city a lot. I was constantly moving. So I lost all my high school friends. Um, I mean, we still texted, we didn't hang out. Yeah. So I'd go out to bars and to the gym. That was kind of my, routine and like it's just a lot easier to meet a guy at a bar than it is to meet a guy at the gym so most of my friends were yeah. constantly going out to the bars Same. and they messaged me like hey man you want to go out to the bar and I'm like yeah sure so i 
drank a ton. And now that I've gotten older, I've met people through like martial arts and they become my closer friends. And now I get messages at like eight in the morning instead of eight o'clock at night saying like, Hey, we're going to go meet at the trail and go for a run. Do you want to come with? Yeah. yeah. And like when you're having a day where you, you're kind of on the fence, like, I don't know if I'm going to work out or if I'm going to be lazy and play video games. And then you get that message. Like, yeah, that sounds actually kind of fun to run with other people instead of just sitting at home by myself doing nothing. Yeah. It sounds, it seems weird at first, but after you, you know, just take the leap and do something a little outside your comfort zone. Like what you, the example you just gave there, it, you realize it's not that big of a deal. I mean, yeah. even if you've never done it before, it's just, you've got to start training yourself to feel comfortable doing things that you've never done. I mean, the easy thing to do is go to the bar and drink, you know? Yep. Um, yeah. And I know like, it's really easy to say, like, I feel like I'm too busy. I don't have time. Like I basically have a couple of hours to kind of chill at night and then my weekends are free and that's it. And I wish I would have spent more time getting involved in just different groups and rec leagues and stuff, you know, uh, like this martial arts thing has been super helpful to me. And I, I, it's again, it feels like a thing that I barely have time for. And yet I do. And like, it's got me in a much higher class of people. Um, yeah. You know, it's yeah. there's, there's other things, golf, um, Golf's an interesting one because you don't necessarily have to love the game to benefit from it because even if you don't really like golf, you're outside, you can drink a couple beers, and you tend to meet a much higher class of people. It's yeah, like, golf's you know, not, uh, you know, you have to have a little bit of money to, to play golf. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's a tough one to get into. Um, but you can usually find an old set of clubs for sale yeah. at a reasonable price, and you don't need a full set. Like, I wish somebody would have told me that when I was younger. Um Really, you only need like a handful of clubs. You can kind of pick the rest of them up over the next few years if you actually get into it. Yeah, golf. I grew up. <clears throat> I don't really play it much anymore, but I grew up playing golf, and it's like one of the most therapeutic sports yeah. there is. I think, especially for for men. I mean, it's just it's peaceful. Usually, yeah. it's beautiful. Um, it kind of is like an old boys club. Like, there's definitely women golfers, but I mean, I don't know. It's probably ninety five percent men. So guys are always complaining there's no place for men like that that kind of is still an old man's club yeah yeah so um as far i mean what i would say is you know just pick like four or five habits that you can ideally do daily so one of them would be reading reading is huge um i i started forcing myself i've always been a reader but ever since new year's i've forced myself i'm going to sit down and do nothing but read either a book or an article, blog, whatever, for 80 minutes a day. So an hour and 20 minutes a day. And it has been like, seriously, we're only like five, six weeks into the year. And I like my life is like changing already just from reading yeah. 80 minutes a day. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea that you include blogs with that too. I think that's people look at blogs like they look at comic books like that's not really reading I'm like why it's still i'm still benefiting yeah. from it. it's actually super useful um i use i guess it's an rss feed or whatever it's called feedly and like i've got most of my favorite websites in there and instead of going to twitter or instagram and mindlessly scrolling i usually go to that and i'll look through and see what new stuff's on there and i'll read two or three of those and you can get way more information out of five minutes reading a blog than you will from 20 minutes on Twitter. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, your blog's awesome, by the way, if you guys have likewise, those of you guys that haven't uh, read path, the manliness.com, go check it out. It's got very, you guys, you have a lot of really interesting, like titles to your articles uh, that just, that you, you want to like sit there and read all of them. But, um, and then when you read them, you realize they're really good. So his blog is awesome. Life Math Money's got a good one, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, Ed Lattimore has got a good one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, there, there's not as I don't think there's as many. Actually, it, it's kind of weird because in a way, there's not as many as there used to be, but there's also more at the same time. You just have to know. You just have to look in the right places. There's some good ones. Um... David Perel's got some good writing stuff. He's not necessarily about masculinity, but he's he's got some really good writing advice and some interesting takes. And then there's a guy named Entering Manhood, and he's 
if you look at his Instagram and Twitter and stuff, you wouldn't know it because he kind of shit posts a lot. But yeah. he's actually got like a really good blog and he has a really good email. And it's it's like our kind of content where it's it's focusing on masculinity and, and men's improvement. And uh, you're right. There's there's a shocking lack of um, of male writers. There's just not very many. And a lot of the men that do write. I call them soft chin journalists, you know, like they're these guys that you look at their picture and it's like, how many hours did this guy spend stuffed in a locker? Like, I don't want to read his stuff. because I don't want to end up yeah. like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of an interesting time. Cause I feel like there's like a new generation of blogs and writers that are coming out. Now you used to have guys like, you know, uh, bold and determined and, um, danger and play, which was sort of just old blog. Those are kind of done now. Um, you can find his now, archive though. I've actually been reading some of the old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like, what I'm saying is now there's almost like a new generation. Now there's, mm -hmm. there's like math money. You, um, you know, um, common collected is a good one. Um, but yeah, no reading's huge. So I would say reading as far as, you know, daily habits, uh, reading, writing changed my life and yours, obviously, uh, that's a good habit. And then, uh, working out, exercising, um, and then I would say meditation is something I started doing recently. Uh, that's that's having. Uh, 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 I'm not like I haven't completely settled into it yet. Um, but, <laughs> I've been working on for two years. I still struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get used to it. Yeah, but I haven't done guided meditation yet. I heard that's easier. There's so. some um there's some podcasts where they do those guided pot yeah i like the guided meditations but there's other times where i'm super adhd and add so i have a hard time sitting still like i'm kind of fidgety right now and you can tell i haven't worked out yet um but like i'll sit and meditate and then like three minutes in i'll, I'll kind of like pop up real quick i'm like oh i gotta i gotta write this down because i get this awesome yeah. idea and then like a lot of guys will look at that it's like oh you're gonna sit down and meditate for five minutes and you couldn't make it three minutes you failed it's like no that was the whole point i sat down to clear my mind and then the universe gave me this awesome idea and i and i captured it that's that's a win like i yeah, think yeah. people get, get the wrong idea with meditation sometimes yeah, I mean, I think as a content creator, that's like, there's, I've got, and Roger, I'll get to your question in a second. I've got, I look like, a, my, my apartment looks like a mad scientist. I've got, like, stuff written all over the place, scattered everywhere, like ideas. Um, I've got all these recordings in my phone of stuff that I want to capture and not forget about. Uh, I think that's, a, you know, a, I think that's just something... That one thing I've been one thing I've been doing, and this helps for I, I think this is good for content creators, but anybody is um, I almost always have a notebook in front of me, and lately it's been these really cheap, crappy college notebooks or whatever. Yeah, and I and I'll go through and I'll write down the page, and then the next day I just turn the page. And what was happening is I was like having these really good half baked ideas, or I was forgetting about ideas, or I just wasn't in the right mindset that day. Yeah, and I would get forgotten, and then when I got to the end of the notebook. Or if I was just bored one day, I would turn on some like, I don't know, Spotify playlist or something. And I would go through from the beginning and start looking through it. And when I found a page that had nothing on it, I ripped it out, put it in the burn pile. Or I would find like good ideas and then I had to decide what to do with them. I had to keep it somehow. If it was something I didn't want to lose, I would either write it down like on Evernote, which is a yeah. really cool note taking system that, that uses the cloud to go from your computer and to your phone. Yeah, I use that. Um, yeah. Sometimes I would just put it in queue to start a blog post. Sometimes I would write it down in this. I got this other notebook where it's nothing but I call it like my Bible. It's like my really, really important information that I need. And it's it takes a lot to get into that one. But uh -huh. like after time, after, you know, months of doing this, like you look through this thing and it's like, oh, my God, like my kid's going to get this someday. And there's going to be some really cool information that I wish I would have had. Yeah, yeah, it's. I know exactly what you mean. I've got, I've got like six of those. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, I'm still hanging on to them because I yeah. keep telling myself I'm going to look through them. But <laughs> um, it's, once you get started, it's kind of fun to actually go through everything because you're like, oh, I didn't even remember writing that. That's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's see what uh, Rogers. Okay, she jokingly told me she wasn't afraid of losing me during phone call. 
told her I would let her go then and hung up. Uh, <laughs> when no contact, what could I, what could I have done? Should I have checked her? Cause I took it as a clear sign of disrespect that I just shut down. Do you have anything to say to that? I don't, it's tough without context. Um, Cause you know, if it's like one of those things where you meet a girl at a bar and then you talk for a couple weeks and maybe you made out with her and then this happens, like, I don't know, maybe it probably wasn't going to go anywhere and maybe she just move on. But if this is like a two year relationship where like there's been legitimate like growth, I, maybe it's worth saving. I don't know. It just depends on what he's going through. But uh, when when girls joke about not caring about losing you, it's, it's not a good sign. And it's yeah. probably going to leave <laughs> something worse. So uh, two things. One. I don't know. She might just not be that into you. Like, yeah, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I think guys need to take that less personally because um, most of the time it's not going to work out. And the other thing is like every time that happened to me, um, I, I've had a lot more relationships where I was on the, the side where I dumped the other one, but still it's, it's usually kind of mutual. And yeah. I would always look back after the end of the relationship and it's like, all right, let's take inventory here. What's, wrong with me because <laughs> i've gotten yeah. better at this but for a long time i would enter these relationships in like great shape i was in like this really good mindset and then like by the time i got to the end of the relationship i'm like man i put on some weight yeah that uh, happened to me too. i haven't seen my friends so maybe there's a something that you're doing that it's not necessarily your fault or the reason why she's leaving you but you can benefit from it all the same so uh, just yeah. don't try to take it too personally either yeah you just want to develop a yeah. mentality of being obsessed with your mission and your purpose and to the point where you don't even ask questions like that anymore you don't that kind of thing won't even come up in your life anymore and it can be hard yeah. to imagine that when you're younger but yeah it's easier as you get older i think definitely and that's something i didn't understand when i was younger because i remember i would say with maybe one or two exceptions but every single long-term relationship that i had I remember it being like gut wrenching and spending weeks trying to decide if it was right to leave this girl. And it was hard and I hated it. And I was always doubting myself. I thought it was the wrong thing to do today. I can look back at every one of these girls that I dated. Yeah. And I think there's like one or two that I think I would have been okay with, not necessarily like happy, but like, I think they'd have been fine. Most of them, I would have been outright miserable. So it's yeah. hard to see it, but if there's problems that early on, they usually get worse. Uh, yes, they do. They do. I mean, you just, you know, it's easy to get sucked into that because Hollywood trains guys to think it's normal to what you see in movies is not reality. It's right. just not, I mean, or on TV usually. I mean, it's just, and you, you grow up, you, you start watching those when you're very young. And so it influences how you think. And it's very, very hard to break out of that. It really, what it is, is blue pill conditioning. I mean, it's, yeah. it's hard to, to break out of that. Um, but as I've gotten older and more centered and mature, I, I look back on when I was so preoccupied with those types of things like worrying about that stuff and it's just it's like laughable almost you know yeah. um yeah i don't i don't look back and like regret a lot of stuff like i don't feel like i missed out on you know this girl that i didn't close the right way or whatever like it's completely out of my mind i look back and i think oh man probably shouldn't have sold that half a bitcoin at 200 dollars. you know yeah. it's like it's more like life changing financial decisions or business decisions or you know time with friends like I think back to like dating this one girl and like I'd spent a lot less time hanging out with my friends when I was with her. And like, those are the things I regret more than like, I should have made it work with her. Right. Right. Um, that actually is something I wanted to ask you. Uh, your cryptocurrency is becoming, um, you know, a bigger deal. You know, it's yeah. uh, an interesting time right now for crypto and, um, I know you're you're involved with that to, to some degree. I don't know how deeply, but 
do you have any advice for guys that, you know, maybe they're, they don't know anything about it or. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, how to get started with it, basically. It's funny because people will say things like, I can't get into Bitcoin because I don't understand it. And my response to them is like, explain the Federal Reserve to me. And they don't, they don't understand that. They don't understand quantitative easing. Um, uh-huh. So you don't have to fully understand crypto. And I don't. The way I think of crypto, and, th- and there are some good guides out there, and I tweet about them a couple of times. There's, um, I'll have to look it up, but there's there's one guy, I want to say his name is, I'm, I'm not sure, I'll have, to, I'll have to find it later. But there's a couple good guys that can explain it to you, but you don't need to know that much. The way I think of it is, it's, it's not a currency in the sense that you're going to buy a Snickers bar with a satoshi a piece of your bitcoin that's not the point of it it's like a reserve currency it's like gold or silver you stock it away as a hedge and the important thing to remember is um there's only going to be i think 21.2 million bitcoins ever they're not going to mine more than that so it has to be worth something significant as long as people are interested in it and it seems to be the ones who are taken off so it resets yeah so i mean in a way i mean so it's in other words it's not like with it's not like the currency. u.s dollar or fiat currency or any currency where they can print more and more and value it last year in 2020 22 percent of the u.s dollars ever printed in existence were created i so, heard that i couldn't believe yeah. that when i heard that but you're i think you're the third person i've heard say that I, like the last week I actually misquoted it like three times because in my mind, I, I said that and in my mind, I just knew it was wrong. I'm like, no, nah, that can't be right. It must be 20% in the last few years. But no, it's one year. And it, it's the cost of, of, you know, what happened in 2020 with this little sickness thing. And it's all right. stimulus checks. And, you know, as long as they keep printing money, and this is something that's been going on even before um, 2020. But, and that's why Bitcoin is created, really. It's like a hedge yeah. against it. So, don't Stop don't it. don't YOLO either. Like even if this thing is screaming higher and like you don't want to miss out, like don't put every single dollar you have into it. Um, I I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is what's been working for me. I try to keep about a third ish of my like liquid cash in cryptocurrencies, and I try to keep about a third in um, actual cash or something kind of like it. Uh, wow. And then another third I want in stocks, but I'm also, um, it's not always something I advertise too much, but I'm, I'm kind of experienced with stocks. So most people should not do it themselves. They should put it in the 401k or whatever and let somebody else handle it. And I've, I've actually probably got a lot more than a third in stocks when you count the 401k and stuff like that. Um, so you're, di- you're kind of diversified in that sense. And that's and that's the key. I think people need to diversify all their stuff. So this this whole YOLO thing, putting every single dollar into GameStop, makes for fun social media posts. But most of the time, it ends in tears. Um, Doge coin, same thing. That's kind of a joke coin. You can probably yeah. make some money on it, but like I would put very small amount of play money into it and expect to lose it. And I personally have not touched Doge. Um, no interest. But yeah, yeah, Bitcoin's been a big one. The other one that's been interesting, and again, I can't really explain it very well, it's Chainlink. And um, this thing, it's becoming one of like the top 10 currencies and just like trading volume and and, uh, valuation. But it's gone from like a buck and a half to 30 bucks over the last couple of years. It's actually, if you put all your money into, if you put half your money in Bitcoin and half your money into Chainlink, you'd have made more money on Chainlink last year. But no one's talking about it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I the reason I'm asking about cryptocurrency is because I think it's important for guys to be not, you know, just to be aware that you can be proactive about. I mean, you want what you want, ideally, is to have, you know, fuck you money, basically, right. you want to be able to have full control over your life. And the more you, the more knowledge you have, and the more you learn about things like cryptocurrency and how to deal with women, the more free ultimately you're going to be, you're putting yourself in a better position to have choice and to not be 
restricted or confined. You know, yeah. that's what and, being a man's all about. And if you ever decide, like, you want to say move from you know America to uh, Serbia or yeah. South America, or wherever, like putting all your money into crypto is a great way to do it. Especially if you're going to go somewhere. Like, um, I don't know enough about Serbia, but like, let's say you wanted to go somewhere like uh, Ethiopia. Like, I don't, I don't think their currency is very safe. Or Brazil, you know, same thing. If you yeah. put all your money into Bitcoin and then just kind of pull some money out of that and put it into reals or into whatever the hell Ethiopia uses, like that might be a better bet. But the, the neat thing about Bitcoin is you can kind of make yourself into like a global bank. You can move it around. Also... Yeah. I saw this on a Telegram chat. I didn't realize people didn't know this. You don't have to be a citizen to have a bank account there. So, if where you're, anywhere, if you're afraid of like America having some sort of a whatever, you think there's going to be an insurrection and everything's going to fall apart, like you can make a Swiss bank account. You can make a bank account in Germany. Yeah. Like you can yeah. set up a bank account anywhere, and you probably can do it online. I'm pretty sure. I've got so, I've got a couple bank accounts here already. So yeah. Yeah, it's not that hard to do. It's, I mean, the banks are pretty happy to take your money usually. Another thing I think is important for guys to learn about is taxes. Like if you guys haven't read the yeah. book Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, read that book. That book probably had more of an influence on me than any financial book. But um, yeah. one, of, one of the things he talks about is become knowledgeable about money and how it works. And learning the ta how to navigate the U.S. tax system, um, how taxes work, corporations, LLCs, that kind of thing, that can really, really make a huge difference in how much... LLCs are work. cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know what was going to happen with Path to Manless at first. But one of my original thoughts was I wanted to create a little bit of revenue so I could use the whole expenses idea of the LLC. So, I don't know, you have to make a certain amount every year, I think. It's like maybe $400. It's not much. But yeah. if you if you can do that, you can expense stuff through your LLC. Like, um, I'm probably going to buy a new laptop soon, and it's pretty much going to be tax free because it's a business expense. Right. You know, there's a lot of neat things you can do, and this is. I mean, maybe you're not even going to make necessarily like an actual business, but if you can pull some revenue through it, you know, enough to kind of justify the expenses, like you can save a lot of money on taxes that way. Yeah, that's what also, I do. Also, um. <laughs> not to get too much into stocks, but there's something called tax harvesting that people do where at the end of the year, they'll look through their position. If they're making too much money, they can sell off some of their losers and you can claim those as um, losses. And it can kind of cut down on if you're making too much money and you don't want to pay the capital gains tax, yeah. you sell off your losers and then you can buy them back later too. Why not? Yeah. That's, buy the same year. That's interesting. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, I, I know what you're talking about. I, um, yeah, that's a good point too. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a uh, a business when I lived in Texas for four years, and having that LLC saved me a ton of money on taxes. So it really yeah. it helps teach you about how money and businesses work. You know, so it's a game. It's it's just a game. You know, it's kind of crazy. I know people like to complain about the American tax system, but there's ways where you can kind of get around it. Um, you know, I pay a lot in taxes, but then I look at my tax rate at the end of the year. It's never as high as I think it is. There's, there's yeah. ways if you're smart or if you have a good accountant. I hire accountants easier. Yeah, they'll, they'll yeah, me too. Money. I they don't cost that much. Yeah, they don't cost that much. They'll save you enough money that it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I had a an S corporation and I paid myself a uh, a salary. Yeah. No, this is not advice for everybody. Like, don't get me wrong. I know there's guys that are like 24 and they're like, what do you talk about? Taxes are easy. I'm like, listen, dude, you got a W-2 and that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I got a W-2. I got 1099s. I got these K things. I got stuff coming in. I've never even heard of. Like, I don't know what all this stuff is. It just all goes into a folder and I bring it to the tax person and they make my life easier. It gets more complicated as you get older. And if not, you're probably just not that ambitious and maybe that's okay. Yeah, some guys aren't. I mean, yeah, there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. But typically, uh, as you get older, your taxes will get complicated, even if you don't want them to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's see here. So, yeah, I mean, I think kind of the reason, just just to mention it one more time, we'll, we'll go for about um, five, seven, eight more minutes. 
Um, I just think with everything going on and as volatile as the, the culture is and what's, you know, who knows what's going to happen with COVID and fiat currency and all this stuff. And, you know, uh, you know, even, even just between like intergender dynamics between men and women, things are, things have never been the way they are now. You know, it's just yeah. deregulated, uh, you know, marketplace and there's just it's a crazy time so i just think knowledge is power knowledge is is power in this day and age and your blog is like i said is a great place to uh for these got for men to mentally arm themselves and start creating a life of freedom and mobility Thanks, um, i mean you would agree with that right with, with the way yeah, things absolutely are. yeah and, and your blog is also the same um a big part of why I created the blog was I was frustrated at the lack of good advice for young men. Like there's some out there, but there's not a lot. And a lot of the mainstream places like GQ, Playboy and Esquire, they've kind of abandoned. They uh, sold out. They sold out. Yeah, they, yeah. But they've abandoned like the traditional strong men. And I agree that there's a culture war going on and our yeah. side's losing and losing bad. Like it's, it's not even close. So uh, it's, it's not easy, especially that first year. First year is probably not going to be, worth it really like you're not going to get a lot of traction but writing online creating youtube content even just tweeting if you have some kind of advice that can like help other men like it's hugely beneficial and yeah like, i mean when there's, you, a, there's no market saturation that people want to talk about there's like hardly anybody doing this no and you learn you learn things as when you teach people things you learn it too you know right um, yeah you yeah. see it from a different perspective and it reinforces things you already know. Um, so I, I mean, everybody has their own unique personality. I mean, you know, our blogs talk about a lot of the same stuff, but they're right. at the same time, they're a lot different because we have different personalities. So we have yeah. our own style and, you know, uh, I just think it's, it's a brave new world basically. I mean, look at me, I moved to, Eastern Europe and I'm making U S dollars, but I'm spending Serbian dinar. I mean, my, the yeah. money stretches two to three times as far here. So I'm a little uh, jealous of that. I took the, I took the less, um, <laughs> less aggressive version of that, where if you can make money online, you can live anywhere. So like my cost of yeah. living would be insane in New York or California. And I don't want to live there anyway. Uh, so I found a cabin in the woods in a place that, like it just suits my lifestyle anyway. And it's, yeah. it's way cheaper to live here than like Chicago or St. Louis. Yeah. I mean, even, even within the United States, there's a huge difference from. Yeah. It's stunning. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for guys that are just to say this really quickly, cause um, I think, I, I think my computer's probably got like 10, 12 more minutes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh for guys that are interested in getting out of the rat race and kind of, you know, starting something, I think freelancing is a good thing to start. Um, you know, you could, there's ghostwriting, copywriting, there's uh, graphic design, there's yeah. all sorts of stuff you can do freelancing that you won't make a ton of money, but it will at least get some money coming in, you know? Yeah. Um, affiliate marketing is a really easy one to start. Like I think almost anybody can make at least one sale doing that. And then, it's important to get that first one because if you get that one, then you believe in yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something I think people need to, I think you need to hedge yourself in two ways. One, you get some more income coming in with this other, whatever other income you use. And then the other thing is you're going to learn skills and by having skills, you become more valuable. So uh, I didn't know how to do a lot of this stuff when I started, but now I can do like basic web design. I understand copywriting. Um, I actually do, most of my own graphic design. I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but I've definitely gotten a lot better. Um, you know, there's a, there's a ton of ways where you can kind of just get started and yeah. nothing else. It's fun. I like doing this. Yeah. Just don't, you know, um, don't uh, put yourself in a compromising position, you know, right. don't quit your, quit your nine to five, do this stuff at night when you get home or in the morning before. Yeah. Work. Yeah. And like, You'd be surprised, like how much you could get done with like an hour a week. You know, you could sit down and write like a 
thousand word blog post, no problem. Especially as you start doing it more, you get better at it. And most people have times where they're bored. So, you know, I don't get mad when my flight gets like delayed at the airport. I sit there on my phone and I start writing something out, you know? Yeah. There's always something to do. Uh, Let's kind of wrap this up. You have a book called Reclaim Your Manhood. That kind of talks about a lot of the same stuff we've covered here in this broadcast. Um. So you guys can can get that on your website, right? At the manliness.com. Yeah, there's links to it. It's uh Reclaim Your Manhood by Ryan Fellman. Um it's on Amazon if you want to get a paperback or ebook. It's also on Gumroad. For some reason, some uh some people in foreign countries have a hard time with Amazon, so that works for them. Uh I also have a book that I seem to have misplaced called The Warrior's Mindset. Yeah, so it's under under Ryan Feldman. You can also probably search Path to Manliness. I think that'll bring them up too. Uh, they're on my website. I promote them a lot on Twitter too. But Reclaim Your Manhood. Some people mock it because it's not the biggest book. It's actually pretty skinny. Um, I think it's like ninety pages or something. But that's by design. This is meant for men, and for some reason, men don't want to read. Like a lot of yeah. guys really struggle to read. I've had a lot of people tell me like this is the first book they've like finished since like graduating high school or college. Yeah. Um, it's simple. It's streamlined. There's no fluff. It's just, it's 20 ways to reclaim your manhood. It's, it, it's what I use to get out of my rut that I was in. It's how I got myself into a better position. It's real simple. I mean, I think you can tackle like in real life, tackle one topic, one chapter each month, and you'll be stunned at how different you'll look at the end of the year. Yeah. It's an awesome book guys. It's really like, you know, it's easy to read, easy to digest. And he can, he has a way of condensing and explaining things in a way that just really hit home quickly. So I, I encourage you guys to check that out either the physical copy or the digital one. Uh, the other thing, uh, if you guys are at all interested in growing on Twitter, we've, uh, Ryan's got a, um, the Twitter dominance tribe or sort of an engagement group. Uh, I'm in there. Um, there's a, several people in there and that that has done a lot to help me on Twitter. So uh, you guys can find that. That's on your website as well, right? Yeah, you can find that. If not, you can DM me on Twitter. I'll, I'll, I'll get you there. I actually, I respond to almost everybody. I, as long as it's like a reasonable request, it may take me a day or two, but I'm pretty reachable. Uh, yeah, Twitter Dominance Tribe, it's a, uh, it's a good group. You can interact with people. They'll, uh, they'll show you some things. We'll ask questions. Most people give you an answer and then, uh, yeah. Get you some more exposure. Yeah. And uh, then the last thing I'll say, uh, what, what did I want to mention on, on yours? Um, oh, get on his email list. There's a link in the description. Yeah. Ryan sends out pretty awesome emails. They're uh, different than everyone else's email list. I can, they're very unique and very interesting. That's the one. That's what I'll, Thanks, man. I'll say. If you're not on mine, get on mine too. But um, yeah, his, yeah good email he, list. he talks about a lot of current events and cultural things that are going on. Um, so, you know, there's a link in the description below, get on his email list and, uh, you know, you can take advantage of that. Um, I think that's pretty much it, but yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on Ryan and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll stay in touch, but, uh, yeah, if you guys liked this video, make sure you smash the like button helps me out a lot when, when you guys like these videos. Um, check out Ryan's path to manliness.com website, his Twitter, um like there's a link in the description to his instagram all that good stuff so smash the like button hit subscribe guys if you're not a subscriber yet and uh that's it this is matt mitchell from mission life motion and uh thanks ryan i'll talk to you soon hey thanks matt it was fun okay later see you man